Hello and welcome to the Red Brick Sport Podcast. I'm joined this week by Nathan. Hello. Harry. All right. Sam. Hi. Alex. Hello. And Nicola. Hi. I'm your host, Dan. Uh, let's start with a question for you all. Uh, Rooney this week was pictured out of 5am at a wedding on his night off during the international games. So my question to you guys this week is what would you do if you were given a night off between international games? If I was genuinely England's captain or whatever, I would probably just stay and read a book and stuff. But conversely, for the point of, I don't know, the answer you want me to give is like, I'd go to MAGA with the lads or something. You can't really do that overnight though, can you? You could if you have like a private jet. Yeah. Um, I would go for something like, um, I'd just sit in my house and play FIFA all evening. And right the wrongs of my season so far. Um, on in grid. virtual form. <laughs> yeah, in virtual form. <laughs> All right, that's more an answer I wanted. Nathan? Well, if, if Gareth Southgate told me to go to bed, I'd just go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Nicola? Yeah, go to sleep. All right. Great answer, everyone. What would you do? <laughs> I'd watch Antoine Griezmann goals and skills compilation videos. Welcome All night. The awesome. experience. <laughs> Uh, right, let's talk about some football then, shall we? The biggest game of the weekend was Man United Arsenal, um, and we have some Arsenal fans and a Man United fan here today, and we also have someone who went to the game. So Nathan, mm. what was this game like? Well, it started badly for me on a personal uh, personal matter because as I was getting into the stadium, the my ticket didn't work, so I had to run back to the ticket office and miss the first fifty minutes of the game. So it didn't start very well. As the rest of the game ticked on. Um, I just thought we were relatively in control, just to confirm I'm the United fan here. Um, I thought we were in control of the game, we controlled most possession, and we had well, the major- majority of chances. Not that they were good chances, but I felt like we were controlling the game. So when we went 1 0 up, I felt, you know, we've got this in the bag, and yet again, we dropped deep. We made defensive substitutions, which normally I'm fine with, but I think he made the wrong ones personally. And then, obviously, one chance, one goal, and we were left to ruin it now. Yep. So missing the first 15 minutes didn't really matter because Juan Mata gave you the lead in the 69th minute. Um, it was Olivier Giroud's late equaliser which broke Nathan's heart. And uh, as Nathan mentioned, that was their only shot on target. So you definitely did have more of the uh, chances. I want to talk about a penalty shout between Valencia mm. and Monreal. I think it's a fair game. Um, Valencia dug Monreal in the eye yeah. um, before it. I think, to be fair, if it was outside of the box, say if it was just past the halfway line, it probably would have been given as a foul. Yeah. So on the reflection of that, you can say it should have been a penalty. But I think it was, perhaps it would have been a soft penalty to give. Yeah, it, I mean, my view was, obviously when I watched it in real time, I thought, why hasn't he given that? That's clearly a penalty. When I saw the replays, even though Monreal did have his arm across Valencia, it looked to me like he wasn't actually touching him at any point. Meaning, if there's no contact, it looks like there was, there was down on the side. It didn't look like there was. It, was. it happened in my end of the pitch, penalty. and when I first saw it, I thought, "That's I mean, I don't understand. That's a stonewall penalty. I don't understand why he hasn't given it." And then at half time, when you had a look at the replay, I was less sure. I can admit that, but I still thought that that's a penalty. You know, he's missed one there. Yeah, I mean, I will say, if it had been, if it had been given, I wouldn't be sat here thinking, "Oh, what an awful decision." <laughs> yeah. So I, I can see either way. My issue with it was that both players had a really low centre of gravity, which means they were more likely to fall over in the first place. Mm. So I feel like that's maybe why the ref didn't give it, because they were already downward motion. That Fair. could be why. Yeah. Um, can one of the Arsenal fans in the room tell me whether Sanchez should have played this game? Because um, I think that you were never going to get the best out of Alexis Sanchez in this game, given all the international stuff that's been going on, how far he's travelled. He played with a bit of an injury for Chile. He is actually superhuman, um, so he can do it. He has proven that he can deal with it in the past. Um, I, to be honest, I think it was a combination of the way we played, the feckless manner in which we set up and played the whole night. Well, for 88 minutes, um, and Sanchez didn't. Sanchez was dropping deep a lot, but he does that anyway. Um, I think you can see that he probably was slightly more tired than he would be after a week's break between games. Um, but the Arsenal performance, I can't. I can't say anything positive about that whatsoever. The only thing I can say is that two substitutions combined to create a goal, and that is literally all I can say, is it the only good thing. Yeah, I mean, I think playing Sanchez, he's been playing so well for us this season that you kind of had to do it. Um, I do think, and this is a bit of credit to United, I think the way he likes to play and drop back and be involved in the link play, United kind of parked the bus when they had to defend and got everyone back meaning there was no space for 
uh, Sanchez as or anyone to keep moving and create that link play that's worked so well for us. And so the real flaw was that Wenger should have brought Giroud on much earlier than he did, really, for us to have. So mm. to create more up front, because we needed a central striker to get a ball into the box for, and we didn't have that. The only thing I'd add to that is he's quite a hard person to say no to in terms of playing games. Isn't he loves mm-hmm. football. I've heard, yeah. Which is, you know, I mean, he did. I mean, last year uh, he had a, quite a bad injury against Norwich, um, and I think that was blamed on sort of overexertion. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I can see your point there, to be fair. Nathan, Phil Jones mm. was back yeah. for this game. Um, <clears throat> We almost forgot he existed. Yep. So uh, and his his great facial expressions were not on Twitter for a while. Do you like Phil Jones? I do. I think he should be playing. I do. It's. I mean, obviously, you know, my Twitter feed is filled with United things, and uh, a lot of it has been, you know, anti Phil Jones because I mean he's just sort of disappeared off the face of the earth for about a year now. But I always remember when it was a couple of years ago when Jones and Smalling were coming through. I had more hope for Jones just because I thought he was a better footballer, and I still do. I still think he can be a better defender. He's just got to avoid injuries because it's been so long, as you say, since he's playing. But again, he's played. He played against Swansea, when he played against Arsenal. I thought he was, he was fine. I mean, he's playing alongside Rojo, and that's not exactly someone you want to be playing alongside the central defence. And he was fine. Um, so yeah, hopefully, if he can stay fit, that'd be good. Just one other thing I thought um, was when they brought on Chamberlain and Giroud. It's quite clear what their plan was. You know, they're going down. They're going down the wing. They're going to send crosses in. So the one thing that was really disappointing with Mourinho was that he took off Mata, who was already having a good game anyway. He could still help going forward. He brought on Schneiderlin, which normally that's fine. But they weren't playing in the middle. They weren't playing passes at that point. They're going to go down the wing. And the one person we could have brought on was Young instead of Rashford. And you could see how much difference that made. We'd had Blind, who was already um, going to be struggling with Chamberlain's pace. So help him out and bring on Young for the defensive mind on the wing. So it was a real shame. And you could see as soon as Chamberlain beat him what was going to happen. It was... yeah. Yeah, I mean, I must say, I was very surprised that there was no Luke Shaw, just because the pace that Arsenal yeah. have, you know, Walcott started on the right, and then you added Chamberlain to that. Yeah. Even if Luke Shaw does have some defensive frailties, he would have had the covering pace to at least keep up. And, I mean, obviously it didn't really matter in terms of most of the game, Walcott didn't really use his pace that much. We had Darmian, who is pace but he was booked early, so he had to be taken off, and he looked like he was going to concede another second yellow and could have done, which is why we had to bring on Blind. But at that point, you've got to help him out, because Rashford doesn't have that defensive mind yet, so it was a shame. Luke Shaw perhaps not brave enough to play in this game. That's what, that's what I hear. Well, like Sanchez. Chris Smalling as well. <coughs> yeah. Although He's broke a broken toe, so... <laughs> side, side note for Chris Smalling, I did see on Twitter recently, it was his girlfriend's birthday, and he called her his fiancé and wife-to-be in yeah, one so tweet, they, when they are the exact same thing. So, you know, just... Wow. <laughs> white minds of our nation, people. Um, brilliant. Let's move on to Tottenham West Ham, because uh, this was a great game. Um, another London derby, so inevitably Harry Kane scored, scored twice. Um, lots of lead changes, another Mikel Antonio header, um, and Harry Kane's penalty won it late on, um, and he described it as not getting much bigger than that against 17th place West Ham. I, 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 defence of Harry Kane there, I obviously don't agree with him wholeheartedly, because obviously you can get bigger than that, but it was a very good game for London, like West Ham and Spurs absolutely low with each other, so last minute, I, you know... I can see where he's coming from. Obviously, it's a cliche, but... Not know. quite a World Cup final, yet. I mean, yeah. I feel like... I feel like England are never going to get to a World Cup final in our life. I also feel like two weeks ago, if he'd done it against Arsenal, it would have been bigger than that. Yeah. So. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so it does get bigger than that. Uh, <laughs> um, are Tottenham missing Toby Alvaro? Because since he's been injured, they just haven't really looked the same defensive side that they normally are. Um, Kane's back now so they're scoring but they're conceding as well in an odd way I think Alderweire sort of helps more in an attacking sense although he is a very well extremely competent defender um, from when I've watched those I watched them play Villa last season at Villa Park um, and his range of passing is that of a complete central midfielder he's so good at passing and what, it, what his passes do it allows the width of Walker and Rose to really exploit the opposition's defence. Um, and I don't think Kevin Vimmer is quite offering that sort of that same ability on the ball. Um, and he's probably slightly inept compared to all the world defensively. Um, I think he was own goal against Arsenal. Yeah, who knows? It's not uh, helping his case. Not much he could do about that one for me. Mm-hmm. But um, 
Yeah, he's not he's not as experienced as Alderweireld for sure. I won't go as far as to say they're missing him though, which I think is impressive. I mean, I think he's for me one of the best defenders in the Premier League, if not the best centre back. But I mean, I think they've looked fine. I mean, the two goals they conceded, one was just a bit of a mishap from the corner, it all rebounding all over the place, and people weren't watching. But I mean, the second one again, I mean, he wouldn't, Alderweireld wouldn't have stopped that. It's just a penalty because the Anderson's grappling. So, and otherwise, apart from that in the game, I thought they defended well, and in the second half, Spurs were very, very good and deserved it. To be honest, in the end. It was the first time they've conceded two goals in the Premier League this season. Yeah, and they've still been missing Alderweireld for a number of games, so I yeah. wouldn't say they've missed him necessarily. One thing I want to say, though, they were criticising Randolph a lot for the second goal. Do you know when, um, was it so- who, who? Son crossed so- it? Son yeah. crossed it in, yeah. and Randolph got his hand to it, and it went straight to Kane, unfortunately. They were saying, oh, it's a, you know, unfortunate for Randolph, only mistake he's made. It's not a mistake at all. Like, yeah, it was just very unfortunate. Um you know, if he, say if it was a shot and he did, did that to tip around the post, it's like, what a save. And say if Kane was, you know, made his run slightly earlier and he was literally in the line of the ball, it would have been, you know, an unreal flick away. But just because it happened to land straight to Kane, it was it seemed a mistake. Mm. So I just want to defend goalkeeper Randolph there. All right. Uh, Nathan, you mentioned Janssen. Uh, <laughs> is it over for him now? Kane is back. Um, he's always going to be second in command to Harry Kane. I mean, you can't come from scoring 27 goals in the Dutch league to sort of usurp someone who scores 25 in the Premier League. Um, I think he's quite similar to Kane, to be honest. Very similar players in terms of their, their build and the way they like to play football, usually with their back-to-goal um, sort of link-up play. I just don't think Janssen's adapted to the Premier League fully yet. He looked good in his first two games. I thought he... Um, I think it was a game away at Everton. They played Kane and Janssen up front. He missed um, good chances. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but he did look very, very competent. He looks very physical. He looks like he can adapt. It's just whether, it, if it takes him more in the season, he'll get down as the new Roberto Soldado. But if he does it this season, I think he could do uh, just fine. Fortunately, that is um, the problem. It is very reminiscent of Soldado. He scores penalties and he hasn't scored goals. That's what people are looking at. They're looking yeah. for goals. He's playing up front. And in the end, he gave away a penalty. Yeah, he, he had the shot, which set up their first goal. But, um, you know, it's a shame for him because you can see he's trying, you see he's willing, but a lot of the time the touch falls away from him and it's just not happening for him right now. And Kane is first choice by a mile ahead of him at the moment. Yeah, I was surprised to see they played in two strikes. Yeah. Because, like uh, like Alex, I when they signed him, I thought, you know, that's a dead or replacement because it fits the style they want from a striker and then they can rest Kane or if Kane gets injured. They have a like like replacement to bring in. It's not two strikers I would have ever thought play you would play together. And it also means they're leaving out someone who's probably better for them yeah. somewhere else on the field to play two strikers when they don't need to. Alright. Uh in a word, could West Ham be relegated this season? No. 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 Okay. Uh, let's move on to Crystal Palace Man City uh, this was almost <coughs> a great upset for Crystal Palace uh, but of all people Yaya Torre rescued Manchester City um, what's changed that's like Yaya Torre back into the team have they given him a birthday cake has his uh, agent apologised to Pep Guardiola what do we think well, I Yaya said sorry his agent said apologise I, I didn't hear the agent say it I thought it was Yaya said you know I'm sorry which so I don't know if, if Dimitri Seluk, I think that's his name, has spoken to Pep or not, but yeah, he has apologised, put him in the team, and there you go, bags two on his, uh, on his return. One thing I thought was, if that's worked out so well for City, is it may be a sign that Mourinho should bring back Schweinsteiger, an ageing central midfielder that's an engine at the back, first game back, and he has that kind of impact that wins them the game. I think that helps a long time. Schweinsteiger, I think, he's, is he not in talks to sign for a club in America? I think. He's also not quite Yaya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. skin in but, proportion, yeah, unfortunately. And also, the, the, the comparisons are similar, yeah. I, but the, I know what you mean. The other big thing is, I mean, everyone expects Torre to leave in January or next summer. Yeah. So coming back from a long break like that mm. and putting in that kind of performance shows the work he's still doing yeah. off the pitch is going to get him a nicer contract wherever he goes to. I mean, he's probably going to go to China and get a nice contract <laughs> anyway. But. Um, Vincent Company went off injured again. Surprising. Um, is he ever going to be back and fully fit? Um, for me, I, I, I want him to be. I like him. I really do think he's, I mean, sort of has been over the past sort of three or four years. 
uh, until very recently the undisputed best centre back in the Premier League. Uh, but just he's just so so injured, and you just you, you can't you can't expect a manager to rely on a player that. Can't even do ninety minutes. It's, it's like it's like Ledley King times three. Like Ledley King could not train but play. But Ledley King's injury was like the same one. Yes, yeah. one against Palace. Yeah, it was yeah. just a concussion. <clears throat> it was a bit. It was a one off, really. So it, this like, was just unfortunate. It really was. I mean, yeah. yes, it's it seems apparent that it's obviously going to happen to company. If it's going to happen to anyone, you know, fans the way to get another type of injury. But this is something he's hopefully just he can get over. You know, it's not like a recurrence as. Um, I said of another injury. Concussion. Yeah, because when I saw it on match of the day, he landed very awkwardly on his knee. The way it twisted, I thought it was. No, I was pretty sure because he had problems with his side. Yeah, wasn't it? That's yeah. What I, I'm yeah. pretty sure it was to do with the fact that he couldn't play a concussion. But we'll see how that develops. <laughs> All right, uh, Crystal Palace uh, have now gone 17 games without a clean sheet. Um, what do we think of Pardew? At Crystal Palace, because it seems that his effect is is very quickly wearing off and has been all year. Um, if he hadn't got to the FA Cup final, would he still be in a job right now? Probably be England manager, wouldn't he? Um, to be honest, uh, <laughs> Palace's record now is starting to resemble that really long Welsh town. Um, I can't remember Harry. Would you do the honours for me? I can't say it. What do you mean, can via PG? That, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't, I can't say the PG of, The amount of losses they've, uh, <coughs> they've got. And it, it, it seems with Pardew, every club he goes to, there's an instant impact of about 15 to 20 games where they probably win about 11 of them or sort of, you know, collect sort of two thirds points. Um, and they do all right for themselves. And then it's like the same same thing at Newcastle, obviously. So he worked wonders, um, finishing fifth, um, and eventually. Yeah, well, what, what situation did they end up with last season? Alright, do we think that they might go down this season? Um, Again, no, I think there's three worst teams in them, and yeah. they seem to be a momentum team. If they win one, they're going to win four. You know, when they finally won a couple this year, they were in a row. That's what they need, they need a little block. It's very, very tight down there, and I think they've got enough in, in the locker to get out of it. And they've got the best player in the Premier League. <laughs> Christian <laughs> Bente. Okay. Correct. Right. He's, he's two, I think, to be honest, yeah. he's... He'll score enough goals for them in the crucial stages. He kept Villa up for like three seasons, so why yeah, can't With a much Palace. worse team than yeah, Palace. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They've got Zaha and... Yeah. yeah. Well, much better than the yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break and we'll come back and talk about Chelsea and Liverpool. Right, we're back after, once again, some magical music. Um, I want to talk about Middlesbrough Chelsea, um, because we've been used to Chelsea breezing past teams, and now we've seen them grind out a result uh, against Middlesbrough. They won 1-0, another win, another clean sheet, and another Diego Costa goal. I thought Burrow were quite unlucky in this game, defended pretty well, um, and a moment of just standing still and watching Diego Costa put it in the goal. Um, But do we think Chelsea... Are going to win the league this season? Yeah, I mean, in in this fixture, they've already done better than Arsenal and City, who both drew with Middlesbrough. At least Chelsea found a way to win it, and also I think City have been quite up and down. Yes, they've had periods where they look completely dominant, but then they've had periods where they look completely inept and like they can't play football, which is very strange given the caliber of players on their team. Whereas now that Chelsea have found their formation. They have not looked anything other than dominant throughout all their fixtures since. I think this game showed there are a couple holes in the um, three four three. Like Adama, obviously he's a quite a unique player. He, when he managed to get past Alonso or Moses, like it just showed the vulnerability in the three at the back. Granted, there's not every team has a player like Adama, who's probably the most infuriating player in the Prem, um, as I experienced last year. But like, it just showed there is holes or are holes in the formation. I don't actually think Marcus Alonso is that good. Mm. Um, I think if you put someone like Jordi Alba or David Alba there in that sort of left mid attacking left back sort of role, I think you would find much more success. I know he's obviously a very, he's quite obviously he's quite tall. Um, very defensive-minded, but every time he went forward, he's for me he just looked a bit. 
He looked like a left back, like attacking much further up than they should have been. He always um, seems to end up in the box with the ball as well. Yeah, yeah. it's very weird. And he, like, he, I think he had one shot that just about went out for a throw in yesterday. Um, <laughs> If you had someone there who could sort of, who was a bit more attacking minded, but obviously. But I think that shows that the system works, that <clears throat> even though you've got players who you wouldn't necessarily think fit in, I mean, I wouldn't have thought Moses could play as a wing back. You know, you've got Moses and Alonso, neither of them stand out, and yet yeah. they're not conceded in six games. They've won them all. You know, the yeah. system's clearly working yeah. for them. So. Mm. Yeah, that's a fair point. I can't really argue. Yeah, and what if they want to buy some, uh, some other full backs. See, like, I thought Ashley Young would be a decent sign. <laughs> For, for Chelsea, like to play, yeah, well, defense, as a defensive does. winger, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, but like, yeah. as you said, like you made the point, they haven't conceded in six games, yeah. it's hard to argue. Yeah, can't really. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention is they, they have an advantage, uh, obviously not this week, but they have an advantage of not playing in European games, um, similar to Liverpool. And I think the fact that they'll pick up a few extra points when a lot of their title rivals will be playing in Europe might actually push them on to the title, um, even if they don't necessarily have the best squad. Um, I think that is a bigger factor than people are giving it credit for. Does anyone else think that? I think that's important because they've named the same starting eleven for the last five consecutive Premier League games, and they've never done that ever. Um, and it's true that when um, other teams are in the Champions League, they change their team specifically for the matches because they know that the players possibly will get tired because they'll play more than one match in a week. So, yeah, mm. that definitely plays an effect. Does anyone disagree? Yep. Strongly. Mm. When I was watching United, Arsenal, Chelsea and Liverpool at the prime in, what, 2007-2008, we were all competing at the latter end of the Champions League, quarterfinals, semi-finals, even finals sometimes, and we won the Premier League, so did Chelsea. You know, the top four were the top four, and they took part in all four competitions at the latter end of them. In the end, I think that helps. You know, you're playing competitive games, uh, yes, okay, sometimes you have more injuries and things, but we had squad depth, you know, it was, wasn't a problem. Maybe now there's the Premier League's lost quality, so it's going to be helpful for Chelsea and Liverpool because of that. But generally speaking, I don't think it should be a problem that you've got more games, you're playing Champions League, playing against better teams. I feel that should help rather than hinder. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm somewhere in the middle. It's, it's not such a big deal as it is just playing midweek games for the other teams. I mean, these are top-class footballers, who should really be able to at least manage 60, 70 minutes on a Wednesday and a Saturday. On the flip side, there is higher chance of injury when you're playing that often. And so on paper, it doesn't affect them. But if you think about, say, City, if City lose De Bruyne again through injury because he's played in a midweek game in the Champions League, then that is going to affect them and help Chelsea uh, more than it otherwise would. I want to move on to Southampton Liverpool quickly then. This was nil-nil. Uh, Southampton's defence once again proving how good it is. Um, and Liverpool strangely stopped scoring. Uh, now we've just mentioned how player tiredness shouldn't really be a factor. I was going to ask if this was the fault of uh, long-distance travelling for the Brazilian players because Firmino and Coutinho didn't quite like themselves in this game. But I'm assuming people disagree with that. That could just be because they were utterly... Uh, they just you know hung over from annihilating Argentina and putting in such a dominant display and they're still like Liverpool should have won the game they had the chance to win it yeah. you know you can't say like Firmino not bearing that chance is because he's had a long playing journey like, yeah there's, there's no correlation there's no, no correlation, correlation. correlation but yeah. just a, perhaps a suggestion yeah. as to why he didn't look up to mm. his usual standard and um, Mane travelled 16,500 as well <laughs> so well Jagnac yeah. travelled to Australia and back and yeah. came into Villa played it Brighton away on Friday and was like he's one of our best terrible. players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he watched the game. He was good. Okay. Well, he was. <laughs> By his standards, he was good. He yeah. Probably, yeah. Oh, so bad. All right, can I get estimations on where Liverpool will finish this season? Third. Fifth. Oh, um, second. I, I think I said fifth. Me and Harry predicted. This is Liverpool, yeah. Yeah, we predicted the Premier yeah, League table. Yeah, I see it. And ourselves yesterday. Uh, did I say fifth? I see. Yeah, fifth. I said fifth. Yeah. So that's my prediction. Second. All right. All the listeners who can't see this, <laughs> we sincerely apologise. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, they sit second, just behind Chelsea. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. We'll take another break, and then I'll round up the other results, and Nicholas can talk about the lower leagues. <laughs>
Right, I'm going to round up some other quick results in the Premier League for you. Uh, Sunderland managed to win 3 0 at home to Hull, and Jermaine Defoe scored his 150th Premier League goal. Still quite a way off uh, Alan Shearer. Pickford was unreal again. Just one of, he made probably the save of the season, but it wasn't even like kicking all his match of the day. Just carry on. All right. Well, and each be scored twice, which was. This is all taking away from Jermaine Defoe's great achievement of 150 Premier League goals. Um, <laughs> but that's fine. And mostly for clubs that weren't challenging at the top, I'd like to add, other than a brief stint at Tottenham. So, fairly impressive there. Well, wasn't he at Tottenham when they weren't challenging at the top? Good point. Uh, Watford beat the Premier League champions Leicester. Uh, another away loss for Leicester. Could they get relegated? No. No, yes. no way. No. They could. Ooh. They could. I don't think they will, but I think they... United think, could get relegated. I think they... Yeah. Chelsea could get relegated. Yeah. Could be yeah. so many points. That would be unprecedented. Um, it's a great goal by Watford, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Yes. Yeah. Watford played well. Well, we're again. watching. Mm. Watford do look good. I think yeah. they'll probably be very comfortable in this yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, currently eight. Yeah. You, you put them as... Oh, you, put, you put them 13th. Yeah. I put yeah. them ninth. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it'll last for that long, but I think they'll yeah. do... Just fine. They're yeah, somewhere in that range. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Everton drew one all at home to Swansea. Uh, probably should have won that game. Um, Bournemouth won one nil away at Stoke, which was a great result actually. Um, Very well. Nathan Ake with the goal. Um, and tonight is West Brom Burnley. Um, Huge game. Which yeah, I mean, I'm expecting nil nil. But by the time this podcast comes out, you'll know that it was six all, uh, and we all look like fools. Right. Um, Nicola's going to run through the lower league results for us. Okay, so Villa played on Friday at Brighton. They drew 1-1. They set in 16th on 22 points. Uh, Villa have dropped 17 points from winning positions this season. And if they hadn't dropped those, they'd be top of the league. Uh, Birmingham City beat Bristol City 1-0. They sit 5th on 28 points. Um, they're unbeaten against Bristol City in their last 12 league games. Wolves drew 0-0 with Preston, sit 19th on 18 points. Uh, other facts from the Championship. Derby have kept 18 out of 29 clean sheets at home and are yet to concede at home with Steve McLaren in his return. And Wigan were unbeaten in all five league games uh, to Barnsley and they've only conceded one goal. So Dan is happy with the 0-0 draw. <laughs> uh, in League One, Coventry have not had a good record against Oxford United and that continued. They lost 4-1. They sit in 19th on 19 points. Walsall also lost. Uh, they Gillingham beat them 2-1. They sit 17th on 22 points. Southend haven't lost a game in November since 2009. Chris Wilder has only lost 3 out of 41 league games as a manager of Northampton Town and Sheffield United. And Graham Alexander has a 70% win rate at Scunthorpe. In League Two, Stevenage uh, won three consecutive away league games for the first time since 2002. Morecambe um, set a new record of seven consecutive home league defeats. And Nathan Jones at Luton has won 11 out of 19 away league games, which is 57.8%. Finally, uh, in National League, Solihull also lost the 2 1 at Barrow, so they're in 16th on 22 points. All right. Some cracking stats there, Nicola. Thank you. Um, this was a weekend of big European derby, so for the first time ever on this podcast, we're going to talk about something other than English football. Um, Atletico Madrid lost 3-0 at home to Real Madrid in the Madrid derby, and Ronaldo got a hat-trick, which was fairly disappointing, as an Anton Griezmann fan. In Der Classica, Dortmund beat Bayern 1-0 at home. Aubameyang scored. Um, the Milan derby was a bit of a cracker. Mm. Ended two all thanks to a late Perisic equaliser. Milan derby is not any good anymore. But you've got to see the goals oh, though. Yeah. Kondreva's goal, great game. game. Oh, stunning. Kondreva and Suso, two great goals. And Fenerbahce beat Galatasaray two 0 at home. Robin van Persie scored twice in that one. What a man! Um, right, thank you very much for listening. You heard from Nathan, Alex, Nicola, Sam, and Harry, and myself, Dan. We'll be back next week. Alex is waving you goodbye.